very nice. Get out of my window. It vexes me. Tugs at my mind. I can't get it down. I have to record it just to get it out. It's troublesome. I don't think any spiders will actually be able to climb up the top of my house. So, the problem is I'm doing a NaNoWriMo project, and this project is about, well, what it usually is about, I'm writing a mystery novel, but I'm revisiting a world that I've already made called Anilo. Anilo has certain properties about it that make it unique to the fantasy genre. It is a fantasy uh, mystery, mostly. In any case, ah, I have to figure out how magic works in this particular fantasy world before I can get the story really started. Specifically, I'm having trouble with time magic. The way that this world works is there are nine different races on the world, and each race has a gift of magic. The gift of magic follows two rules. All gifts of magic follow these two rules, and that is, one, you have to touch it to be able to affect it. You cannot affect things magically from a distance. You have to be right there. And two, whatever is given is taken away, and vice versa. What the hell? You're not a cow. Get, get out of here. I'm surprised he hasn't come for me yet. Oh, there he goes. Hey! Party! Anyway. This is the Heart Mage world. If you've visited my site, you may have seen Heart Mage as one of the options to click on. How did you get out? And uh, in the Heart Mage world, um, mostly it focuses on heart magic. Heart magic is magic of the mind, magic of the soul, and that's got its own complexities. I'm not even going to begin to launch into how that magic works. Uh, I would have to figure out how the human mind works in order to affect it properly. Time is my enemy. Anyway, the main race that the stories have to do with, that's the Anilo people, or the Moom race. They're not humans. They're not human analogs. They are Mooms. They are the people who do heart magic, and they have very specific rules as to who even gets to cast or even know how such magic works. And that's mostly for the safety of the Moom race. If everybody knew, nobody would trust Mooms. Anyway... There we go. And the ones that do have to wear gloves so that... Well, you know... Imagine you meet someone who could change your very soul you'd be a little bit wary of them, wouldn't you? What am I doing? In any case, um... Let's see... In this particular story, there are sages that are showing up for an annual get-together. No big deal, you would think. It's pretty... Uh, normal. It's an annual thing, but somebody dies. There, there is a particular person, the Time Mage, that gets killed, or time sage, I should say. Magic is subtle enough so that we might not be able to call it magic if it follows a certain set of rules. Is it magic? We understand how it works. We understand that if we do A, B happens. I guess in order to get a handle on how magic works, I have to say what magic even is. Well, if we take... If we take three wheat and we put it together, oh come on, if we take three wheat and we put it together we can make bread. That happens every time. You know it's going to happen. The, pro the way that the game is programmed, it happens that way. When you swing a sword at, say, this chicken, the chicken will take damage, the chicken will die. There are patterns that are followed. Come here damn chicken. There are patterns that are followed. You know A is going to happen because you've done B, or you know B is going to happen because you've done A. There's a certain causality to it. There you go. So, 
magic is just its own form of technology. We know that if we say this particular word of power, this particular fireball shifts from this particular hand, uh, even in D&D, where I'm not even sure if they really identify what magic is, they have certain rules to it that you know you can follow. If you're not playing a fighter character, you know, there's the possibility that the mage character you're up against... What the hell? No, ignore. You know that the, char the mage character you're going up against has the ability to have burning hands on them, and you know not to get within a certain range. You say, fuck it, I pull out my arrow, I load it into my bow, and I put an arrow in the guy's skull. So, patterns. Patterns is what we're talking about. I suppose everything in the world is a pattern, isn't it? This character that I'm playing, this entity, this guy who's holding a sword whose hand I can't actually see unless I get rid of the sword. That's kind of weird, but that's the way that the game is played. It's a pattern. So, magic is pattern-based. All magic follows patterns. Alright, we can use that. We can talk about the different races, their gifts or magics that they have in them and what patterns they follow. Example, the Marf. Marf is kind of a sort of wet, molish creature. They're intelligent, they dig a lot, they're very... Uh, efficient. That, that's what I would identify them as. They're practical creatures. Although they're also very ugly, nobody wants to be around them. They just do their job and get out of the way. Of course, they have their likes, they have things that they enjoy. This isn't about the race of people, I suppose. The Marfs are Marfs there. We'll just say that there is a pattern called Marfs, a pattern of racial pe uh, circumstances that make them Marfs, and they can control Earth magic. Earth magic is a misnomer. It doesn't actually mean they control the Earth itself. Anybody can dig. Now, Earth magic refers to the fact that they can affect solid objects and what those, what that solidness means. So, for example, they can take uh, act, a block of mud and turn it into stone, or they can take that stone and compress it into metal, as long as whatever is given is also taken and vice versa, then, and they touch it, then they can affect it however they want. The Bork, who's the most prevalent race on the planet, are very large, gruff creatures. They are bear kin, after all. The Bork have control over fire magic, which is a misnomer. You want... F no, I don't think so. Hey, you, you I could use. Uh, this guy looks really happy. Hey, I've got a lot of coal. I might talk to you later. Anyway, um... I'm just distracting myself. Where does this go? Um, fire just refers to energy in general and the different kinds of energy. There are diff tons of different kinds of energy, aren't there? There's more than just fire and lightning. We're not all fire benders when we light a match, are we? We can also turn fire into kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is a kind of energy that the Bork can apply to. Given how good they are at the skill of fire magic, they could even control the wind, because that's just another form of kinetic energy, and redirect arrows that are coming at them. There's warp magic, which are applied to the Efi, but nobody actually knows that, because most Efi are too stupid, on purpose, to actually be able to know how to cast their own magic. Only a select few know the Efis are capable of magic, and how that magic works. And... Only five of them are Efi. Efi, incidentally, are rabbit people. Rabbit kin. Don't worry too much about it. There's life magic. These are all the sages that are showing up, by the way. The life magic belongs to the dryads, tree people. Makes sense, doesn't it? That the tree would have something to do with life. Not real sure how the pattern of life should work. I mean, what describes as life? Is it... Is this sheep alive in this particular game because it can move around and baa at me? And if so, does that mean that this flower is not alive? It's not growing, it's not living, it's not breathing, it's not moving around, it's not anything. It can be harvested just like the dirt. I would go to say that this, these flowers are probably not alive in this game. So, let me see. Uh, we've already covered heart magic, haven't we? where you can control the mind to a certain degree, but 
that's the entire point of Anilo, the Moom people, and it focuses on them because I find heart magic the most interesting. You're feared the most if you have that magic because people are afraid you could change their very souls. And then there's time. Time magic. Time is what's at the center of the book that I'm about to write, the center of the mystery. It has to do with time magic and how we understand it. Uh, I cannot dictate time. Let's say this world is Anilo. Let's say the world I'm in, the Minecraft vision. Hey, another another village. Cool. I'll have to I'll have to line out a route to this. So if we say this is Anilo, this is the story I'm writing, then we can make certain assumptions. Like for example, we know life is things that moves and things that are dead are like that. That of course breaks the illusion of what life means in this game. After all, the zombies come out at night, but they are alive because they move according to our definition of the pattern, life. Earth is just, well, the substance it is right here that we can see. That's fine. So, it's matter, isn't it? It's the pattern of things. This grass is of the earth. It is in matter. It's got mass of a sort in the confines of this game. Energy. You could say that light is energy. There's also the kinetic force that goes on between living creatures and not living creatures. Hmm. I'm not going to get into mind yet, because that has to do with dealing with the player. I think this will just about... Yes, there we go. So, time has to do with causality. Patterns bumping into each other. The pattern of time is linear, or it should be linear by all rights. It only goes in one direction. South. Yeah, whatever. We'll say it goes south. It's falling southward. Tra trailing, leaving, leaving a trail of memories behind it. Time is that causality. I am further or closer to my home now than I was ten minutes ago because I'm going towards my home. Well, I run into that same trouble again. How does time work? Because a master of time, a time sage, which incidentally will be, well, should I reveal it? In any case. A time sage would be somebody that has mastery over time and understands the pattern of time the best. It doesn't just fall forward, does it? There are two ways that you can think about time. There's A theory and B theory, and I don't remember which one is which, but I believe that A theory states that time goes in one direction. There is one timeline. It follows one pattern of things. It is a stream of words. It is a set of frames strung together to make animated films <clears throat> frame after frame after frame nothing can actually change in a theory it's all already done you have a destiny you know that this these reads are going to get cut down because it's already happened in the future then there's b theory which has to do with branching timelines and that is that in one possible future, those reeds were cut down. In another possible future, they're still there. And I have eschewed B theory. Not because it is wrong. Ooh, my tea's ready. Not because it's wrong. It may very well be that that's the way the whole world works. It's what quantum mechanics is about, isn't it? Mmm. Oh, that's good tea. No, but because it's more interesting to write a theory that everything happens and fits together and everything fits together like a puzzle. Do I have any wheat on me? I need more wheat. So that's just where it breaks, kind of. A master of time would be able to control the not really the events as they unfold, because if everything fits together like a puzzle, then the events have already unfolded. 
I guess a master of time would be somebody that has some dictation over the causality of the events. You say that A follows B, B happens because of C, and so we all see C happen, but we can trace it backwards. That's right, fuck, fuck for my entertainment. So, a master of time would say, okay, A is followed by B, B controls C, C happens because of D, wait, no, it's gone backwards, and you can even say that D f causes A, the points, the frames of animation get pulled out of order, and it's very, very difficult to follow them. Incidentally, this is what makes writing time travel adventures so much goddamn fun. This is because the outlines look like a madman's drawings. You gotta keep track of all the causality. You gotta follow the if-then statements go to ten. Ah. What am I even doing with my life? Time magic was done by the Felf people, their foxkin. Lord Fox pretty much figured it out, figured out the entire plan. Or at least that's what the Felf people believe. Lord Fox is their god, and there is history with them. In any case, followers of Lord Fox, the foxkin, they have faith that Lord Fox has a plan, that the dictation has already happened, that the frames of animation has already been put into place, that it is a theory of time, not a B theory. There's no deviation from fate. Fate happened because that's the way Lord Fox put it into place. Which of course eliminates free will. <laughs> that's its own trouble. A world without free will means nobody is responsible for their destiny. It's already happened. It's not your fault you murdered that person. It was the way Lord Fox had it. So, ah, base beta. Please tell me, yes, you have called. Whoa. You didn't like that, did you? It looks pretty clear in here. Um. They were hunted down, the Felfs, in olden times. Look, there was this huge battle that happened, oh, a couple of centuries back, and everybody, it was pretty much this world's Hitler, decided to fuck the entire world and try to take over control. Well, in one of those wars, the Felfkin um, basically killed a mountain and froze the entire army into place permanently. Well, time has to come from somewhere. Whatever is given is taken away and vice versa. That's the rules of magic in this world. So what happened was the mountain they were at crumbled into a valley. It happened quickly. It happened very, very fucking quickly. Wait, no, I'm going the wrong way. It had to happen quickly. Time had to come from somewhere, so it came from the mountain. What's this way? In any case, when that happened, a lot of races, a lot of political divides decided that the Felfkin were too dangerous to have around. After all, if they could destroy mountains... It, it took a lot of mages to pull this off. And there's something else, a mystery that I haven't solved myself. How did they touch everybody? They must have done it one at a time, but I guess they must have taken an awful lot of... mages. So, this is the first year when the sages get together that we have a felf joining them. And that's the start of the problems. The sage of time shows up to this meeting, and people are afraid. This is somebody who knows how time works, who can trace the patterns of causality, and possibly manipulate them. It's almost as terrifying as having your soul changed. Are you the same person? Ooh. The concept of identity change is a tricky one. Hmm. Hmm. If I think of the mind as a pattern, 
I might meditate some more about mind, about souls, about heart magic later on. There's a reason that most mages in general are feared, except for the Marf. But what are they gonna do? Change your atoms around? I guess they could turn you to stone if they touched you. Hmm. I'll have to think on that. Well, I think I've taken up most of your time. I don't expect this to get too many views. The entire purpose of this is just to get my mind in order. I've got more thinking to do. And I've got a couple of months before Nano Remo before I start writing this story down. It'll be interesting. I've already got the protagonist hammered out. They're, they're based off of Garrett from Thief. Not the new one. Never the new one. The original Garrett. The awesome. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I'm not sure what this will do, but here it is.